Hello everybody, Marcus Epps here in downtown Chandler outside of West Alley Barbecue. Excited to go inside and try some homestyle Southern barbecue. All right, so we're here at West Alley Barbecue and uh, my first thoughts, initial reactions is it's homey, you know. So walking in, smelling the food, seeing the jazz records and, and symbolism everywhere, it t definitely takes me back a little to home. So I'm excited to dive into the food and uh, try the rest of the ambiance. Uh, with my parents, I talk to them all the time about how food is the last thing that brings me uh, connected to a place. Because I'm a big foodie, my family's a big foodie. Food is something that really ties us together as a family. So to find a place like this where not only is it a great uh, place and my style of food is um, you know, so early into being here in Arizona. So I'm, I'm happy to get this in and um, excited to bring the family here when they come. Preparing meat like this, I know my dad has to wake up early to, right. to smoke anything and grill anything. How is that day to day? You know? So we're, we're smoking all day, all night. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it's not, we, we, we were, once upon a time we were closed on Mondays. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to kind of like get a break and clean the grills and get everything ready. Now we're, op we're back open on Monday. So now we're smoking every day, 24 seven type deal. So we have a guy that comes in really early about four o'clock in the morning. He starts it off, then I got a guy here till about two in the morning, and then that four o'clock guy is coming in the next hour or so, two wow. hours coming in. So, yeah. a lot of hours involved, yeah. right? <laughs> That's a why it smells so good, because it's nonstop. It's in nonstop. Here. Well, it, hey, if you go to a barbecue restaurant and you don't smell any yep. smoke, you need <laughs> to be really to concerned around, right? <laughs> about that place. I hear that. Because you're like, man, what is going on here? <laughs> Food is something that is like a center point in our family for love in general. So, um, it's early, my earliest memories have been around food. And um, that's just continued to develop and, and circulate as I grow older. I, you know, I try different things, but the barbecue, soul food, things like that just bring me home. It's just a memory of love and family. Absolutely. I have to piggyback on that. I mean, the earliest memories is just being around, like I said, your family, sitting around the table with the collective people that you love and being able to, uh, to dine and eat and give that conversation piece of being able to talk to that person right in front of you. That's, that's my earliest memory as a child. Exactly how you're supposed to do it. First bite. Me first. Try this at home. I know they say don't try things at home on video. Try this at home. <laughs> mm. Talk to this camera. Yeah, I get a handshake for that. Appreciate it, bro. So you're gonna, you're gonna get tired of seeing me. Hey, man. Come on <laughs> down. Doors are open for you. <laughs> That's really good. Definitely recommend. I want to try a piece of the rib next. Oh, yes. You only use the utensils to separate it. Next is hands on, or it's not real. <laughs> wow. You can't see it's falling off the bone. Wow. Of course, it's February, uh, Black History Month, really prevalent uh, in, in my business as being a black owned business in downtown Chandler. Uh, working with a variety of charity groups, one of the primary ones that we're working with is BASE, uh, who is involved in the community services, a nonprofit group, uh, bringing in uh, young scholars, African American scholars, teaching them about financials, uh, trades, and things of that nature. Us being able to, to come collectively to be able to grow. Uh, the, the African-American community as far as knowledge of businesses and things of that nature. Um, we, we, I'm a huge advocate and, and, and for pushing the, the African-American native narrative to be able to grow and develop. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that correlates mm -hmm. with some of the things that you've been going through as far as being out of Mississippi, mm -hmm. African-American, out of Mississippi <laughs> playing soccer. So, I mean, that's just, uh, so that's some of the pieces that we do. We do a huge extensive work and charity work. Um, and we want to make sure that we try our best to do it and get that, that narrative out there. Uh, that we are, a, it's a smaller group of uh, population of African Americans mm -hmm. here and we, we definitely want to see what we can do to, 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 to grow uh, and to be more prevalent in, in our local businesses area. Mm -hmm. We didn't have coaches to come teach us. We sure. learned in libraries. We didn't have, um, most of the times didn't have teams to go play because they didn't want to wow. play us, you know. So we may do, we're in a squad and stuff like that. So hearing that, you know, the outreach that you guys do, not only in the kitchen, but out in the community is huge because I'm a product of that. And that's something I believe in as well. You know, I go home, my organization to this day that I grew up playing with, 
CJSO, that was my first club, but it's more than a club to me, it's family. I talk to guys from that team constantly to this day. Their parents are my parents. Their brothers are my brothers, you know? Um, it's a community that has been so instilled in what I do. I wouldn't be where I am now without, one, the understanding of where I came from and, and um, who has helped me to get to where I am, and two, knowing that that is a constant cycle. You know, I, we have a jamboree every year where we get together, we give away jerseys, clothes, we, we fundraise for kids who can't get cleats, you know, back home, because I talk on it now, but there's definitely more representation of black players, soccer players, and both men and women back home, but it's still very little compared to, to the rest of the demographic. So it's something that's, I, I, words can't even put in, you know, I can't even speak words gotcha. enough to uh, how important it is to me. So hearing that, that is something that is amazing to me. You know? well, it's, it's, I could imagine, you know, you just kind of going back to what you were stating about African Americans being uh, the minority in soccer clubs. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I mean, how did that make you? How did you feel about that whole aspect coming out of Arizona? You know, yeah. I could imagine that would be a little bit, you know, uh, the culture. Yeah, no, culture, it was, right? It was culture. You know, I, I say I, I learned life and soccer at the same time. Gotcha. You know, going into tournaments, we we, we get there and everyone's looking at us because we're literally the only all black team there. Gotcha. You know? Gotcha. And um, and those looks they weren't necessarily out of curiosity. A lot of it was negative, thinking gotcha. that we didn't know how to play or we didn't know how to this. And gotcha. I would say my team was, we were ranked nationally, top 10 nationally. That's amazing. And That's amazing. we carried that, you know? We always knew who we were internally and how we were viewed gotcha. internally. So, like I said, I learned life lessons. I've had moments where, you know, we got kicked out of a tournament because of uniform gotcha. stuff or attire, or things that weren't being used on all the teams there. No. But I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Gotcha because it instilled not only a fight for me, you know, it, it made my purpose in playing the game bigger. That's beautiful. At a, young, a younger age, you know? That's it. That's so it. it's, it's, I could tear up talking about back home and my oh. club back home. My boys to this day, if they see a goal, they see a video of me or anything, I literally have a group chat with, like, with a, a lot of them and they're like, all right, boy, you know, I see you, that's Mississippi, great. this and that. That's great. And that's soccer to me. That's, that's something great. that can never be removed from the game that I love, you know, and it's part of the reason why I play and why I give so much, so. I feel like that's authentic, right? <laughs> Gotta have a little spot. Little, little, little barbecue sauce <laughs> on it, man. Boom. That's dope. Thank you, man. Thank you so Forrest, much, Of course, thank man. you, thank appreciate you. Appreciate it, I'm gonna frame that, baby. Frame that up there for sure. Thank you, love I appreciate it. Man. No, thank you, thank man. You. Thank you for having me. Like oh, I said, man, you're going to get tired of seeing me. Yeah, you know? man, you Making sure on. I bring the fam out definitely here, gotta, too. Definitely got it. <laughs>